Keto with Casey, where I like to talk about how I've lost 97.4 pounds since starting the ketogenic diet and how you might be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life. Uh, it's a beautiful Saturday morning where I am. I will ask that if somebody can let me know that you can hear me and see me. This is always a challenge. Technology um, is fun and sometimes not so fun. But also, if um, I have a generator going in the background, so if you hear an odd noise, that's it. We've been without power in, in our part of the world since Thursday afternoon. Um, since Hurricane Michael at that point was just, I guess, Tropical Storm Michael pushed through. Uh, not complaining though, we are safe, we are sound. You know, first world problems, we have a generator and we are together. So all is good. For those of you who have loved ones um, who have been through the devastation, because I assume if you've been through the devastation, you've got better things to do than to watch a Facebook live stream about the ketogenic diet. Keep the faith. So we'll keep a good thought. Um, today I want to talk about a topic that actually my daughter who is visiting us, thank you Edna for letting me know that you can hear and see. Um, we were talking this morning actually over coffee and my daughter was looking at a source for information for about the ketogenic diet that where the recommendation is different than the recommendation I followed. Not drastically different, but different. Uh, it recommends managing your carbohydrate intake via percentages rather than actual grams. Now, if you've and this is a very common thing. You'll see this pie chart. I try not to say the M word. Some of you may know what the M word is. I try not to reference it because I think it's confusing. Um, so, but my daughter asked if, if this source, which seems like a learned source, had been the first place you heard about doing this, what do you think would have happened? Rather than the source, which was my first source, which was, um, the white coat video by Dr. Eric Westman of Duke. Um, Duke um, Medical. I, you know, I told her, I said, I don't know. I think I probably would not have been successful and I would have ditched it. So it, it made me, got me to thinking, well, yeah, it is confusing. And there is a lot of conflicting information. Some of it, my opinion, is confusing by design. And I'll tell you why in a minute. First, let me go over the protocol I followed and the one which brought me success and really brought me back to my life. Not to be too dramatic, but it's the way I see it. 20 grams of carbohydrate total, not net carbs, a day or fewer. So the carbohydrate intake is not a minimum, but a maximum. Eat fatty sources of protein, a little bit of, you know, dairy if you can tolerate it, not unlimited. Don't eat if you're not hungry. And stop when you're satiated. That's it. The reason that, and that's what generally is considered the baseline that will be effective for just about everyone. Total carbohydrate intake of 20 grams or fewer a day. And 10 is fewer than 20, so that will work. Zero is fewer than 20, so that will work. 18 is fewer. Your mileage may vary. If you can tolerate more carbohydrate intake, fantastic. Uh, if you are younger, a male, body composition is different. If you are very athletic, then you might be able to tolerate. I am, I started this when I was 55. I am 60 years old. So my body composition is different than a 26 year old male body lifter, <laughs> body trainer. But that is pretty much baseline, will pretty much work. And this is not only for weight loss that it can be effective. 
but for managing type 2 diabetes. So there you go. So why is there different information out there? Well, some of it is well-intentioned, if possibly ill-informed. Um, and there can be variations within the professional community about it even. I think, I think some people need to adhere more closely to the protocol, possibly more insulin resistant, which is when your body produces insulin, but, but, but your system is quit listening. It's like, okay, insulin, I'm not, I'm not responding to you very well anymore. And so your blood sugar can rise. Uh, some people are insulin sensitive. So if they eat more carbs and their pancreas produces the insulin, it does its job and everything rolls along beautifully. But if you find that you have excess body fat, possibly borderline or full-blown type 2 diabetes, acid reflux, aching joints, try the 20 grams a day or fewer. Total, not net. Net carbs, you know what that really is? That's just eating more carbs. You know, there's just not great science behind this idea that fiber is, you know, will pass straight on through without any impact on insulin for all people. Do what you want to do. Do what works for you. I will tell you what worked for me. And I'll tell you what doesn't work for me is messing around with those carbohydrates. Does not, I don't feel well. I immediately retain water. And I'm just not going back to that, to that life I led for 30 years as a very overweight and progressively less healthy and less happy person. So, the percentages. Why do I think the percentages can be confusing? One thing, that's a lot of math. <laughs> but if someone says, oh, just keep your carbohydrate intake to 10% or, or less a day of your total intake, and just do that and you'll be fine. Okay, so does that mean I can now eat 4,000 calories as long as I keep my carbs 10% uh, or less? That would be 400 calories from carbohydrate. There are four calories for every gram of carbohydrate. That would be 400 divided by four. It's 100 grams of carbohydrate. Wouldn't work for me just mess me up so and plus if I if I did that in percentages and I'm eating that many more carbs I'm gonna stay hungry I'm not gonna be burning fat for fuel I'm gonna remain burning glucose for fuel the whole point of this is to burn ketones for fuel burn fat for fuel if you reduce your carbohydrate intake to a level where for you your liver stops pumping out glucose for fuel your body will happily turn to burning ketones so find that level for you. 20 grams total a day will pretty much do it for just about everybody. That is just what the clinical experience bears out. So why do people put out conflicting information? Again, sometimes it's well-intentioned, but misguided. Sometimes it's purposely confusing so that you can be sold a product to make it easier. That sounds cynical, but I think you know what I'm talking about. I want to point out that there's no real good research that drinking so-called exogenous ketones will do anything for you other than drain your wallet and possibly make your urine exogenous ketone rich, which is not really the point. The point is burning your own body fat through being in ketosis or burning ketones, burning fat for fuel, that's the point. Now, for therapeutic uses of exogenous ketones, this is for neurological disorders, there is ongoing research. But excuse me, someone just came in the side door, so the so the um, generator you could hear it. I, I hope it's not too distracting. 
So do as you wish. But if someone wants to sell you a product to get you into ketosis or burn your body fat, please take that with a grain of salt. By the way, make sure you get enough sodium. There is no product at all that you need to purchase to be successful 100% at the ketogenic diet. Not a supplement, a pill, a bar, a shake, nothing. It is not the presence of what you put in your mouth that does the trick. It's the absence of what you don't put in your mouth, and that's a double negative. It's what you don't eat. It's the absence of carbs, not the presence of fat or the presence of exogenous ketones or the presence of a supplement that does it. It's the absence of carbs. So you don't need to purchase anything. Now, some people will be happy to sell you a bright green mug that says go keto with Casey, but you don't need that to be successful. It's just a fun item. And it's a nice big fat mug. It is confusing. You will hear people advise that there are minimums amount of some food stuff you must eat. I have no idea how many grams of protein I eat a day. Never have. Because if you follow the tenet, repeat it with me, limit your carbohydrate intake to 20 grams total, not net, a day or fewer. Eat fatty sources of protein. Don't eat if you're not hungry and stop when you're satiated. That will, if you listen to your body, it's the not eating if you're not hungry and stopping when you're satiated. So if you're eating a fatty source of protein, what does that mean? Eggs with the yolks, steak with the fat, pork chops with the fat, poultry with the skin, oily fishes, nice oils, olive oil, not in, you know, not chugging it, but nice olive oil if you want it, some butter on your, if you choose to eat vegetables, non-starchy vegetables. And where, where do vegetables come in? I eat fewer and fewer vegetables, not because I have anything against vegetables. I just eat less and less food, and I find that I prefer the food that I'm going to eat to be my fatty source of protein. It's satisfying, it's nutritious, it gets me everything I need. Keep in mind, carbohydrate is not an essential macronutrient. Surprising to some, but it's not. And the majority of carbs that one would get following this protocol would be from vegetables. So if mac if uh, carbohydrate is not essential, and carbs are generally found in vegetables, vegetables are not essential. But if you're going to eat vegetables, how do you get to 20 grams of carb? A very easy trick. Limit it to non-starchy vegetables about a cup a day, which is about the size of your fist before cooking. And about two cups, about two fists, sizes of fists, of leafy greens, maximum a day not minimum. There are not minimum vegetable requirements at all. So if, if the max is about a cup or about two cups, then none is below that maximum. Do what works for you. So that will get you to about 10 or 12 grams of carbohydrate right there, the non-starchy vegetables and the leafy greens in those maximum amounts. But you don't need to supplement to replace the foods you're not eating. This is a very nutrient-dense way of eating. Keep in mind, your fatty sources of protein, most of those sources ate the vegetables on your behalf. You're a second-level vegetarian. You eat vegetarians. Okay. Um, I'm going to quickly scroll down and see if there are any questions I can address. Not that I know everything. Please keep in mind. As my daughter asked me, what would you have done if you had heard this kind of maybe not 100% accurate advice and tried that before trying the thing that worked? I'm guessing I would have failed again. I would have, I would have looked at it as my failure again, just as I thought I had failed in all my previous attempts at losing weight. I'm going to quickly see if I can 
if I could show you something. Here's a little slideshow. And I think in this we'll go, see, that's me, one attempt there, if you can see this, was me at a triathlon trying to be, move more, eat less. I was laughing, but I wasn't very happy. I tried the diets. I tried the move more, eat less. See, that's not a happy person right there. And I took it when it didn't work as my personal failure. What a terrible way to feel. When in truth, it was the advice that failed me. If I had listened to this kind of not 100% accurate advice about the percentages of carbohydrate or the minimum numbers, you know, minimum cups of leafy greens, which is too many leafy greens for me, I would have said, oh, I failed again, when in truth it could have been the advice that failed. Do what works for you. Find what works for you. If, if you feel like it's not working, fall back to the very basic tenets. 20 grams of carbohydrate a day, total, not net. Eat fatty sources of protein. Don't eat if you're not hungry. And stop when you're satiated. Those last two parts are hard because we're very conditioned to eat. Maybe lots more than when we're not hungry. You know, um, I don't arbitrarily not eat if I'm hungry. If I'm hungry, empty, I eat. I just find that happens less and less frequently, and I'm satisfied with less and less food. But I don't believe in arbitrarily not eating any more than I believe in arbitrarily eating because it's breakfast, or because we've been told to eat three meals a day and two snacks a day, or because we've been told if you don't eat every three hours, your metabolism will slow down. It just is illogical to me. I was eating all the time. My metabolism didn't race up. Keep it simple. And my daughter said, you know, Mom, you're kind of dogmatic about this. I said, there's a reason for that. One thing, it worked for me. It was simple. It was straightforward. It, it was logical. I read The Art and Science of Low-Carbohydrate Living by Drs. Uh, Stephen Finney and Jeff Bolick. That explained the physiology of it, and that made sense to me. And I've never looked back. I'm dogmatic not to try to, to say there's only one way, but because there are people in real pain who are really confused. Because there's a lot of conflicting information. There are a lot of products. A lot of people are jumping on the bandwagon. A lot of people will, you know, send you a lot of affiliate links for some food product. Or you can click on it for an affiliate link for some food product or supplement. Please, do as you wish. Spend your money on what makes you happy. But don't blame, don't blame keto for what the exogenous ketones did. Don't blame keto for what the almond flour did. Don't blame keto for what the net carbs did. Keep in mind, this is not a weight loss protocol. This is a fat for fuel protocol. You're burning fat for fuel when you've reduced your carbohydrate intake. Okay, good. You've reduced it to the point where you're burning fat for fuel. If you're drinking all the fat that your body requires for its energy needs, it doesn't need to tap on to your onboard stores. You know, and at the risk of repeating myself endlessly, Keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Eat fatty sources of protein. It's not a magical food list, by the way. You can see the food list I followed, which I've now reduced to one page, at my blog, kcdurango.com. It's under the resources. But it's not a magical list. It's a list of meat. Many types of meat and some non-starchy vegetables, if you choose to eat them, and a bit of dairy not unlimited. You know, a couple ounces of cheese, a couple of tablespoons of sour cream, not unlimited. Two tablespoons of heavy cream. I drink heavy cream in my coffee, in my Go Keto with Casey mug, which you can see at my blog as well. And I limit it. I measure it. 
It's not unlimited. You don't go gluk, 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 gluk for the heavy cream. Because ultimately, the fuel you take in against the energy you expend does matter. The good thing about this one is just if you follow the protocol correctly, you will naturally consume less food because your appetite is diminished, your hunger is diminished, you are satisfied and you are nourished by this food. If I can do this, you can do this. It was very heavy, it was perfectly round. I was shaped like this mug for 30 years and I had given up on the idea of losing weight. I just didn't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes and I knew that was it in my future. Now my blood sugar is the only thing on my annual checkup blood labs that my doctor flagged. She says, oh, your blood sugar is a little bit low at 66. My triglycerides, 55. My HDL, 98. My small sticky LDLs, which are the little ones that get us in trouble. If you want, ideally you want fewer than like 540 particles per whatever the measure is, fewer than 540, I have fewer than 90. So I went from being on the verge of everything bad to being optimal through food. No M word involved, no pie charts involved, no calculating how much protein I'm going to eat. I ate fatty sources of protein and I ate to satiety. That's it. Our bodies know what to do. Our bodies have been doing this for 70 million years. They really do know what to do. We just need to shut up and listen. Step away from the calculators. I used my fitness pal to track my carbs for about the first month because I needed to figure out what that looked like for me. I, got a, I had an OXO food scale and I measured the vegetables when, and I figured, oh, well, a half a plate of broccoli is not really a serving for a person. It's more of a serving for a family and a half. So I learned that and then I quit tracking. Never tracked calories. Every day my fitness pal would think I would be dead by sunup. Keep in mind, you're going to eat less food. You're going to put in your mouth fewer calories. But your body will get the calories it needs because you're going to be burning body fat. Some people say, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, that can't be enough food. It really can be if you're eating only when hungry and stopping when you're satisfied. All righty. I want to turn to questions. Um, I really overdo, <laughs> Bonnie writes, I really overdo the heavy cream in my coffee once a day. I find that drinking a black easier than a small amount of cream. You know, we, we figure out what works for us. You know, if it's easier to just take it black, and some people find that after they've been drinking black coffee for a couple of weeks, prefer it that way. Um, Patreon. Oh, someone's talking about Patreon. I, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jude. Um, I want to thank patrons. Uh, I, I tried to provide free content for those who are interested, like here on Facebook and occasionally on YouTube and on my blog. But really, um, Patreon, this is a dedicated group of people and it's behind a paywall, but for two bucks a month, I do about 20 videos a month, and you get a patron-only forum, and then the interaction goes up from there, depending on your contribution level, all the way up to patron-only live streams, patron-only video group chats, and one-on-ones um, -on with me, an hour one-on-one -on -one with me a month. So anyway, you can find that at Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash go keto with Casey. Thank you for that plug. I also do want to say this is not a it is not a, a financial source for resource for me. We're going to have a cruise. We're not going to have a cruise. My husband and I and other people will be meeting up on a cruise in late March. We call it the Go Keto with Casey dot 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 the cruise exclamation point. It is not a it's a celebrity cruise line. It's not like the food is going to be special. It's just a cruise where a group of us will be hanging out, talking, spending some time at sea with classes and talks and support and all that. So if you're interested, it should be fun. Again, this is not a moneymaker for me. My husband and I are paying our freight. As a matter of fact, they've already paid the deposit for us. Um, 
go to my blog and look under the cruise. And if you're interested, contact Lisa Pennard at Coastline Travel. Book through her and we'll get the group perks. So there's that. I hope you can make it. It should be really fun. Um, and it's not going to be a panel of high rolling lectures. It'll be us, uh, real life people. I'll be there and we'll have some other folks doing some presentations, but it's, it's mostly just real life people talking about our experiences and having a good time. We won't be joined at the hip. You don't have to hang out with people, a bunch of strangers. There are a couple of people looking for cabin mates. So if you're interested, Lisa can coordinate that for you. Okay. Hey, Rosa. She says, yay, Patreon. Um, does anyone have any comments or concerns or questions that, you know, all I can talk about is my experience and my understanding of the science and the protocol. As you know, I am not a doctor, nor a researcher. I'm just a former fatty who got her life back. Um, okay, Robin writes, I went nuts trying to eat to a pie chart. I just track my calories now. Thank you. My carbs now. Excuse me. Thank you. I know, right? It will drive you crazy. And as I say, don't let an app tell you what to eat. It's, it's, a, it's an app. It's a mathematical equation. It doesn't know you. It does not know you. You know you. Listen to your body. You know, when we get things like inflammation, joint pain, when we, our, we get, our skin doesn't look good, we're overweight, our blood sugar has gone up, our blood pressure has gone up, you know, that's our body talking to us. By the time it gets to be full-blown type 2 diabetes, our body is screaming at us. It's been talking to us probably for years. And we've been ignoring it. We've been going, la, 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 la. I don't want to give up my chips, my pasta, my rice, my bread. And please keep in mind, people say, oh, easy for you, Casey. But I'm addicted to chips. Do you know what? I knew that low carb would work for me. I knew it in college, which was a long time ago. But I actually had the thought to myself, I can't see not yet, ever eating another tortilla chip with my husband. I can't, I'm addicted to the chips. Let me tell you what. You tell yourself you can't do something, almost certainly you won't be able to do it. I thought I couldn't until I did. As a matter of fact, after this, our daughter who's visiting from the West Coast is taking us to lunch. And guess where we're going? A Mexican restaurant. Guess what we won't be eating? Tortilla chips or rice or beans. We will have a luscious meal. We'll enjoy each other's company. The food will be secondary to the conversation. This is doable by everybody. Everyone. Don't, don't tell yourself you can't because the cravings are stronger than you are. Come on. Really, a craving is stronger than you are? You know, some of us have been through really traumatic things in our lives. It's difficult to get to the age of majority without having been through some stuff. You know, even a good, happy life has challenges. You're going to tell me that you have lived, you know, survived the death of loved ones. You've been through accidents, terrible medical things, that you've had job loss, you've declared bankruptcy, you've had children who are troubled, you've had your house burned down, and yet you can't fight off a Snickers bar? Of course you can. A craving will pass. Type 2 diabetes won't unless you do something about it. So, Sheila Ann writes, I quit smoking six years ago and it was a lot harder than this way of eating. Right? You can do it. Okay, and the, I can't really see the comments. They kind of jump up and down. The hardest, it's hard to get out of my head that my body doesn't need all the nutrients that lots of fruits and vegetables have. This is, the food is very nutrient dense. 
very nutrient dense. If you get a chance to hear or read the works of Dr. Georgia Ede, E D E, or Zoe Harcum, H A R C O M B E, they both lay out lay out very nicely plants versus animals as far as nutrition goes. But it is we've been it's just been drilled into our heads. You know, you get scurvy if you don't eat oranges. <laughs> um, you know, your potassium will drop if you don't have bananas. Do you know that gram for gram there's more potassium in avocado than there is in banana? And avocado is on the list. Can't fight off a Snickers bar? Ha ha ha. That is so true. Really? I know, right? So, you know, like I said last week's video, we've got the silly season coming up with these holidays end of year. It's just food. And I mean that in both ways. The solution to the problem, to good health, to feeling better, to getting your brain back, to getting your joints back where they don't hurt, it's just food. It's not supplements. It's not powders. It's not something from a multi-level marketing company. It's just food. But on the other end of that, y'all, it's just food. It has no intrinsic power over you. Get out your Wonder Woman cuffs. Become Superman. And say, uh, sorry, Cheetos. Go somewhere else. You're not peddling your stuff here on me today because I don't eat Cheetos. Just tell yourself that. I don't eat carbs. Judith Tucker writes, it sure does. Oops. It sure does work down, work down 70 pounds since April 1st and watching Casey and I'm 65 years young. This is another myth that once you've reached a certain age, whether you're male or female, but particularly females and particularly after menopause, that it's just very difficult to lose weight. I was postmenopausal. I had a hysterectomy when I was 30, 31. Um, what else was I? I had all sorts of things going on. And I'd been heavy for 30 years. I went from a size 24W jeans to a size 6. I was thrilled the first time I bought jeans that didn't have a W after the number. I thought, oh my gosh, I've arrived. And then when I got into a size 14, which was at the time, I think they said the average American woman size, I thought, oh my God, I'm average. If I can do this, you can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. There is nothing special about me and my physiology. I had the same challenges as everybody else, and I had the same rough relationship with food and with myself. Okay? So, Teresa writes, try Mexican, caldo de res. It has veggies in meat. Caldo de res. You know what we get? Our most recent thing is a seafood combo. And I ask for um, ranchero sauce on the side. Uh, just so I can dip it because I'm not, I, they say there's no sugar in it, but I always want to be sure and substitute the rice for more salada in pico de gallo and guacamole. Oh, Wanda, hey Wanda, did you crochet the afghan behind you? It's very pretty, thank you. No, I've had this afghan for longer than I've had my husband. This afghan was, was crocheted for me by a Rastafarian woman whom I met in college. She liked my aura and so she crocheted me an afghan. She said, I, have a, I had a magical aura. I think she probably had something magical going on, if you know what I mean. Hey, Tammy. Casey, I fell off the wagon terribly for my birthday. Feel so much of a failure, okay? First of all, you're not a failure, okay? It's not a crime. I do want to point out, celebrating one's birthday with food that makes us sick is illogical. It's not a lecture. Lord knows I've done it. I have not done it since I started keto. When this clicked for me, it clicked. And I just, I, I spent so long feeling so sick and awful and miserable about myself that I was just ready. I was so far down 
it just looked like so far up to me. But celebrating our birthday or someone else's birthday with food that makes us sick. Hmm. Why don't we celebrate our birthday by drinking just a little bit of Drano? No, we don't do that. But you just get back on it. It's not like, oh, I blew my chance. I had one chance to be successful at keto and now I've blown it. Nope. Get right back on, babe. Next time you put food in your mouth, leave off the carbs. People say, how do I start? Next time you eat, leave off the carbs. That's what I did. I saw the video. I said, well, I can do that. So the next time I ate, I didn't eat any carbs. And then the next time I ate after that, same thing. Total trooper you are. Thanks for getting the message out. Power off, no problem. Bring it on. Well, I will tell you, we are lucky. Um, we're very lucky. If, if you ever meet me in person, rub my head. And if, if, if you end up being, you know, if, if the luck rubs off on you, if you're half as lucky as I am, you're lucky enough. Um, very blessed and happy. And I'm glad we have the generator because we have about $1,200 worth of meat between our fridge and, and freezers. Um, Franziska writes, back on the wagon myself and I'm feeling better every day. This fall made me conscious of not weight, but health. My points are, my joints are so happy. No more feeling like walking on broken bones. Thank you for writing that. My daughter, who had just a tiny bit of weight to lose and did this for two years before she told me she was doing it, didn't want to prove her mother right. Although I never told her what, I mean, I, she's a grown woman. She said, I just feel better when I eat this. And she, you know, she just feels better. Never quit quitting. Okie dokie. Keto sticks? Is that a question? Okay, so here's here's my take on the, I assume you're talking about the urine test strips? Is that what you're asking about, Janet? That you will hear, again, people can be very <clears throat> rigid in their recommendations, or they'll take one bit of information and explode it out and say this is what the truth for everyone. The Urine strips are accurate for most people. There is a small percentage of the population for whom the urine strips will give a false negative as far as that. Keep in mind, they're not measuring ketones, so you're not spilling ketones because that's not even measuring ketones. It's measuring acetoacetate, which is a byproduct of burning fat for fuel. Measure not on a full bladder, so usually not a first thing upon rising because it, the acetoacetate can be diluted. Make sure your strips are not expired, have not been overexposed to air. They're very sensitive to air exposure. And I think there, there are supplements that have riboflavin that can give you a ne false negative. I think that's correct. But for most people, they're accurate. They're still accurate for me. I've been doing this for four and a half years. I don't test often because they're, like, they're always accurate. Now, someone asked, do I have to fast? No. I'm going to give you my opinion on that. For one thing, I, it's it's more accurately called time-restricted eating because you you actually end up eating and fasting means you don't eat. See, right now I'm fasting right now. You don't have to fast. Don't eat if you're not hungry. And that might mean you go for nearly a day. It might mean that your, your so-called meals become more like what used to be appetizers for you. But no, you don't have to fast. If you're hungry, eat. Listen to your body. It knows what it's doing. You don't have to. I don't believe in arbitrarily not eating if you're actually empty and hungry and need fuel. That's my take on it. Hey, Barbara, I met you twice and I admire you for being an inspiration to me and others. Wish I had rubbed your head for luck. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. I'm sorry, Barbara. Things will get better. Right? Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning. Good morning, Jennifer. Okay, so any other questions before I begin to wrap up? Because when your kid wants to take you and your, you know, take her parents out to lunch, you don't say no. It's great when, you know, my kids are all fully grown. Lindsay's 30% white haired. Um, and our sons are off, long off the payroll, married and settled. Everyone's settled. 
it's really great when you've produced wonderful adults and then they pick up the tab. <laughs> so much fun. Hey, Tammy says, thanks. I needed this so much today. I'm so glad. Um, oh, something about snacks. Sorry, went by too quickly. Oh, sorry. Just started end of July 2018 and feel great. At the beginning, did not lose that much many pounds, but inches. My concern is the skin since it's expanded doing my fasting 16 hour. Your thoughts about this? I, I know that there's a theory of autophagy. I don't know whether simply not eating for 16 hours is going to affect that. I have never fasted other than an experiment two or three years ago when my husband was out of town for the, a month. I was, I was gonna see, he's out of town, I'm not gonna eat. But I don't, other than doing that, and you can see that on my YouTube channel, I think. I, I think those videos are still there. No. My skin, I'm okay with my skin. There is evidence that some people who lose a lot of weight on this, the, the, there was an esthetician at Duke who commented that she's not a doctor, but she thought because she'd seen a lot of patients of Dr. Westman who had come in after losing a lot of weight, she'd also seen patients who came in after bariatric surgery. And the bariatric surgery patients had folds of skin and Dr. Westman's patients had less of that or none and she looked at me and said where are your folds of skin you've lost this weight and it's not necessarily because it's a slower process I don't think she had a theory that our skin is our largest organ and this is an anti-inflammatory way of eating and so maybe the skin is just healthier I don't know but I tell you what I'll take I'll take crepey foldy skin over type 2 diabetes and losing a foot or eyesight or kidney or being miserable if I have if I had if I've had the situation where I had to tuck my folds of skin into my pants I would have taken it over to where I was before hello Teresa God bless you too what do you drink in your coffee two teaspoons of heavy whipping cream and Splenda yes Splenda I said it I eat Splenda so does my husband it's the only non-sugar sweetener we found that both don't are not bothered by aftertaste. We've tried Truvia and Stevia and Xylitol and Erythritol, and so we just don't like. Them. I ain't scared of maltodextrin. There, I said it. Ooh, Joanna, seventy-five pounds down in a year. Love this way of eating. Congratulations on your successes. Congratulations on being challenged and and facing the challenge. And as someone quoted on the Keto After 40 with Casey Facebook group, Japanese, an old Asian Chinese saying, there's an old saying, fall down eight times, get up nine. All right, I will start to wrap this up because we're going to go to a Mexican restaurant and not eat tortilla chips and we're going to have a nice conversation and it's going to be fun. Any other last observations or questions? That I not you can ask me anything about myself, and I will either say I'm don't share that or whatever. Any questions about me that you're wondering? Because I like I said I'm not special. If I can do it, you can do it. Oh, Denise writes I want that coffee mug. Go to CaseyDurango.com. And there's all kinds of swag there. Coffee mugs, journals. I do this. I write notes to myself in this journal. And this is a pen. Isn't that cute? And they're journals. And I think there are a couple of t-shirts left. And it's just swag. Like I said, it's fun. Uh, it is not Profit Center either. It's fun merchandise. And people have asked for some of it. And there will be calendars again this year. I'm pretty sure. Um, I use campusmarketing.com. For all these things, they are a West Coast company, not a sponsor, but a friend of the show. Excellent customer service. They make things right. So anything I, I have has gone through campusmarketing.com. Tell them Casey said, hey, not a sponsor, but a friend of the show. Um, Sheila writes, just a quick note, my husband had a heart attack one year ago and he start, 
and he started this way of eating and lost 70 pounds. The, his cardiologist is thrilled. People are coming around, person by person, doctor by doctor, medical provider by medical provider. There is a cardiologist in San Diego, Brett Schur. I heard lecture. Check him out. S C H E R, I believe. Brett Schur in San Diego. I'm sure you could find him on uh, just Google. San Diego cardiologist, low carb or ketogenic. All right, my friends, thank you so much for allowing me to be part of your Saturday. Um, for those of you who are truly suffering with the hurricane, believe me, I'm not going to be complaining. Duke Energy said it'll be Tuesday night before we get things back. Don't complain because you don't have internet. I mean, you know, I'm glad we have a generator, but there are people who've lost everything. So we won't complain. And um, take care of yourselves. Be kind to yourself. And remember, keep your carbohydrate intake 20 grams a day or fewer. Total carbs, not net. Eat fatty sources of protein. A little bit of dairy if you can tolerate it. Don't eat if you're not hungry. And stop when you're satiated. It works. It really does work. So thank you so much. Thank you to patrons who are here today. And if you are interested in getting patron-only content, because that is the main source of, of the content I produce now, patreon.com slash GoKeto with Casey. Two bucks a month gets you the forum. And as I say, people, I think people pledge not to get access to me, but to get access to each other. Gets you the forum, gets you about 20 videos a day, which I make every weekday, and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, some people get discounts on the swag, depending on your pledge level. Okay, enough of a commercial. You don't have to buy anything to be successful, I promise you. Thanks, guys. Hope to see you next week.